Hi friends, this is Deborah Wooler, um, senior editor of the Old Schoolhouse magazine, and we are in the Schoolhouse Teachers Forum, and we are going through a series of devotions called Communing with God in the Busyness of Life. And we are on devotion number three, and it's the importance of the Bible in your homeschool. Why is the Bible important in our homeschool? We, we probably first think, well, duh, <laughs> of course the Bible is important. And we think that, but how do we live that out? Is it really important in our homeschool? I want to give us eight reasons why the Bible is important in our homeschool. And then I'm going to go over just some very brief resources that we've used and that might help you. There are so many resources out there, um, almost an overwhelming amount to look through. Just pick one and go with it. I mean, just make sure you have something. I mean, and we're just not going to talk about one Bible curriculum. We're going to talk about having the Bible as the center of all of our study and walking in a biblical mindset on in all of our subjects. And um, just having that Matthew 6 kingdom first mentality where we're going to seek the kingdom of God in all that we do, in all that we teach, and um, he will add the rest to us. And so... I want to give eight reasons why the Bible is important in our homeschool. This is normally a workshop I give, so I'm going to talk really fast so it's not as, you know, the hour long that it normally is. And um, then we'll go through some resources. So number one, the Bible is important in our homeschool because um, it gives us our conviction for homeschooling. What is it we stand on for our homeschool foundation? Uh, what is the basis of that? Do our children know? Do we know why we are homeschooling? Now, if it's something that we're just trying or pulling our kids out, that's awesome. It's a good start. But we need to also then find out what does the Word of God say and then stand on those scriptures. Maybe post them in your house. But definitely take the first day of school and go over those with your kids so they know why they are homeschooling. So the, that when you are questioned or they are questioned, um, that they know what the biblical answer is and why why you're homeschooling. In in the notes that I sent to Callie that you can get from her, um, it gives a list of scriptures that you could consider for your homeschool. Of course, um, Psalm chapter 1, the world says, stuff their heads with knowledge and they will be, be prosperous and successful. But God says, if you meditate on the word of God day and night, you'll be prosperous and successful. So we want to... Um, do what's eternally good and be prosperous and successful in the eternal things. Uh, so we're going to be looking at the word of God as our meat and our drink and our day and our night and our 24-7 uh, walk of this life is going to be all the kingdom of God first, seeking him first, and everything will be added. And so we want our kids to know. Go over scriptures with them. We want our kids to know why we are homeschooling. Um, what what does the Bible say? Could they ask, answer that question if they were asked? Um, can you answer that question if you are asked? So look at the scriptures that are in the handout. Um, number two. So first, it's important for our conviction for homeschooling. And number two, it's important for how we live. In other words, what are the rules of our home and why do we have these rules? Um, uh, why do we live this way? And we need to have scriptures. We need to have the, the biblical response for our children when they ask us. Um, do they wonder why we're not doing the things that the culture is doing? You know, sometimes they'll say, why don't we? Whatever. Why can't I? Um, why can't I play with these people or this thing? You know, so we need to have an answer. And it comes from the word of God. This is so important. Why, you know, the, when they come to you and say, can we watch this movie? Well, you're going to take them to the scriptures. You're going to say, well, what does Psalm 101, 3 say again? I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside and it shall not cleave to me. So you're going to ask them questions to get them thinking about this. And you're going to say, is what, is this um, anything in this wicked? Is anything vile? Is any of it going to cling to you after you watch it? Um, and so is, does it glorify God? That's in Corinthians. Um, it, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. And so would this video or movie or whatever it is, um, be glorifying God in any way? So you're going to get them thinking biblically by taking them 
to the scriptures. If they say, why do I have to love them? Because, you know, they, they've, they've hurt me or they've done me wrong, you know, and you're going to take them to, to Jesus life. And you're going to show them how Jesus loved his enemies so much so that he laid everything down for them, even his very life. He served them. He loved them. And, um, so in Matthew also, it talks about, um, to in the Sermon on the Mount to bless those who curse you. And so when your child comes to you with these things, like, you know, why do I have to love my brother or sister? You know, they're, they're so horrible to me right now. You're going to say, well, this is what Jesus said is how we live. You're going to love them. You're going to bring them a cup of water. You, you know, of course, we're going to deal with the other child. But when a child comes to you first, um, our, normally we go, okay, we're listening to this and we're going, oh, I need to deal with that other kid. But no, you're really going to start with this one and you're going to deal with their heart and then you'll deal with the other kid. But you're going to bring them to the word of God also. And you're going to say, are they acting like an enemy to you right now? Okay, well, let's treat them like an enemy, which is we're going to bless them. We're going to pray for them and we're going to do something good for them. And then we'll go deal with the other child and get to their heart issue of what was going on. And it all has to be biblically based. This is how we live. And this is, um, this is so important for our life in living a biblical um, worldview out in our homes. So why can't I hang out with them? Proverbs 13, 20 says, He who walks with the wise will grow wise, but a companion of fools, a friend of the foolish, is going to be destroyed. Not just harm, not just like, you know, but destroyed. And so, you know, ask them, well, is this friend a, a foolish person? You know, or do, do, are they wise in the Lord? Or do they do wise things? Or do they, does their life exemplify something wise? You know, so it's important for how we live. The Bible is important to for our conviction for homeschooling. It's important for the rules of our home, why we live the way we live. And it's important, number three, it's important for the teacher. So as the children's teacher, are you prepared to teach truth? Um, are you preparing your school year in order to teach truth? And um, because, you know, a teacher is held to a higher standard. And as homeschool teachers, we need to know the word of God. We need to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a homeschool mom that needs not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's in Second Timothy. God is a teacher. Jesus was a teacher. Jesus listened to his father. We as teachers should be listening to our father, doing what he wants us to do, following him. Um, the Holy Spirit is our teacher, te leading us into all truth. Um, and so to teach like Jesus did is to live according um, in obedience to his father, living in obedience to our father and only doing what we see our father doing. And also teaching in daily examples with concrete objects. Jesus taught in parables and, uh, you know, that really helps our us and our kids to teach them using everyday um, situations that come up. We're going to be teaching them um, what the word of God says and who God is. Um and then we're going to bring out the heart of the matter. In other words, uh, well, every, the heart of every issue, I heard this before. The heart of every issue is an issue of the heart. And Jesus always brought out the heart of every matter and what's going on in that person's heart and how that heart needed to change. And that's what, how we need to teach our children is get to the heart of the matter. Um, Second Timothy again says all scripture is um, given by the inspiration of God, that same breath, inspiration, that same breath that spoke the stars into existence is the word of God. That same breath says the scripture is given by God and it's profitable. In other words, just like creation happened, things became from nothing, became something. Um, this is the word of God in us and in our kids. Is this profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction? for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, the teacher and the student may be thoroughly furnished, may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And isn't that what we want for our kids at the end of this whole homeschool thing is that they would be thoroughly furnished for all good works. That's what I want. I know that's what you want too. And this is how we find it. It's in the word of God by his inspiration of his word working in us as we get it in. Um, Psalm 25 says, lead me in your truth. Teach me for you are the God of my salvation and on you I wait 
all the day. Teach me, Lord. Teach me. Let's just have our hearts always in a position of saying, teach me, God, so that I might teach these children. So <clears throat> it's important. It's important for our conviction for homeschooling. The Bible is important for the rules that we have in our home. The Bible is important for the teacher. And number four, the Bible is important for the student. Is your child prepared for life and godliness? Is your child prepared to battle sin and the enemy of their soul? Uh, are they prepared to defeat this enemy? Are they prepared to have a lifetime of victory? How are we preparing them for that? Um, Psalm 119, again, a good chapter to go, very long chapter to go over with your kids. It's all about the importance of the word of God. And... <clears throat> That's why this chapter is so long is so important, right? It's like the biggest book of the Bible <clears throat> chapter anyway. And so um, Psalm 119 verse 98 through 102 says, Through your commandments, you have made me wiser than my enemies. Um, and so we want for our children to be wiser than the world, wiser than the philosophies of this world that are that are being presented. And that is through the commandments of the Lord. You will see all through Psalm 119, his commandments, his statutes, his testimonies, um, his word, all of that all wrapped up together and is, is the word of God. And it will make your children wiser than their enemies. You are ever with me. And it goes on to, that says they will have more understanding than even their teachers. <clears throat> Um, so many scriptures on this, so many I'm scrolling through. Uh, so it's basically a 24 seven walking in the word of God with our kids. Um, and so this is important for our students that they would know where to turn when they have no wisdom, when they have no understanding, when they are lost, when they are hurting you know they're going to be living this life too we have gone through some trials as parents haven't we? we've gone through some heavy things and the way the children will respond to the heavy things in their life could possibly be how they've seen us respond and we need to go straight to the word of god because that is our health and our life isn't it um so we want the word of god to be working in their heart where our words cannot, our lecturing, our, you know, talking about the good, you know, the good ideas we have, you know, all of the good things that we can proclaim to them may fall aside, but the word of God will stand forever and will do in them what our words cannot do. Um, sometimes it seems fruitless. Sometimes it seems like iron sharpening iron because we're brushing against each other all the time. Don't give up. God's word will not return void. You know, everything we're doing is planting a seed. Every word we say is planting a seed. Every action is a seed planted in our children's life. And so are we planting weeds that are going to overtake? Are we planting the seed of the word of God that will go deep? Um, because we want them to grow into men and women of God. So it's important for our conviction for homeschooling. It's important for the rules of our home. It's important for the teacher, it's important for the student. And number five, it's important for our spiritual health. We talked about this in one of the other um, devotions, our spiritual health. Now, God's continual invitation from Genesis to Revelation is come to me. Come to me. And um, come to me and you will live. This is in Isaiah 55. In Leviticus, it says, um, I will be sanctified in them that come near to me. Uh, Matthew, come to me all that you, all you who labor and I will give you rest. Come to me. Ch James chapter four, draw nigh to God. He will draw nigh to you. Um, Jesus had the children come to him. He said, don't rebuke them. You know, you might be the only Jesus <laughs> that the children will see with their eyes. In other words, you are uh, exemplifying who Christ is to them. And if you're pushing them aside all the time, I'm too busy, I'm too busy. You're like the disciple saying, Jesus is too busy for the kids. You want to draw the kids in and you want to use every opportunity to um, let them come to Jesus. Let them see Christ in you. Forbid them not for such is the kingdom of God. Uh, our hunger and our thirst should be after the things of God. It's, um, 
it's for our spiritual health. So when he says, come to me, it's because he knows we need him. Our spiritual health needs him. And when our spiritual health is right, then our, our uh, mental, emotional, uh, our minds will be right. Our, our thinking will be right. Um, so it goes, you know, from our spiritual health into our, you know, um, emotional health and mental health also. Um, and that's all from coming to him. Come to me. Um, he says, if you come to me, if you're hungry and thirsty for me, I will fill you. The word of God, righteousness, his righteousness. If we hunger and thirst after his righteousness, we will be filled. So we shouldn't be just treating the Bible as a book, but more like a meal for maintaining our spiritual health. Um, the diet of life for us and for our kids. If we don't eat, we're going to starve. Um, if we hunger, we will be satisfied. So, you know, Isaiah said, Oh, everyone who thirsts, come and let him drink from the rivers of life. And that's found in the word of God. So it's important for our spiritual health. It's important for our national health. So when Jesus, his continual um, invitation is come to me, his continual invitation, come to me. And his continual command is go out into the world. So for our national health, it's the go out part, right? So our nation depends on the importance of God's word in our lives. Um, for his word to be um, shared, it needs to be in. <laughs> so we need to have it in us so we can share it. He says, go out into the world and share the good news. So come to me and then go out. Come and go. This is our life with him. He wants us to come and he wants us to go. He wants us to share the gospel, the good news of what we have. Our spiritual and mental health is found in his word and in him. Um, so our national health depends on good, good, strong families who are um, uh, standing on the word of God. That's what, it, that's what our nation needs. It's how important we make the Bible in our lives. Um, our nation depends on how important we make the Bible in our lives and how important it is we live out his commands to go out and preach the gospel. Um, so in Matthew 28, Jesus is telling his disciples to go make disciples. Um, so maybe in our schooling of our own kids, we need to change our focus from just making students into making disciples to go out, to be goers, those who will come to Christ and those who will go out in his name. And number seven, it's important for our emotional health. It's, this is tied to our spiritual health. So our spiritual health, our national health, our emotional health, all are wrapped up in three things. God's continual invitation, come to me. God's continual command, go out into the world. And God's continual promise, which is our emotional health, that I will be with you. His promise, I will be with you, is emotionally healthy for us to know that someone is with us and not abandoning us, not rejecting us, not far from us, but someone who's with us. The emotional health, think of it, of our babies. It depends on the fact that they, they know that their mother um, is with them. They know that they're not going to be abandoned. They're not going to be rejected. They're not going to be mistreated, that they're going to be held close. That's for their emotional health. Um, and so the Bible is, a, is good for our emotional health. It's for the stability of our life to know that God is with us, for him to say, I will be with you. He said it to Adam and Eve. He was with them in the garden in the, in the cool of the day. They hung out together and Jesus came so that we could have that relationship restored again, that we would be with the Lord walking throughout the day with him. He promised Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, David, Daniel, um, that he would be with them. Jesus said, I will be with you even to the end of the earth. He says that he will be with us. In Isaiah, it says, when you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. In Psalm 91, it says, he, you, you will call upon me and I will answer you and I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver you and I will honor you. This is this is health for us, isn't it? It's our, for our emotional health. And Hebrews 13, 5 says, let your conversation or your manner of life be without covetousness. In other words, put aside everything else you think you want and be content with this. I have said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Can we be content with that? We sure can. It's our health. It's the health of our spirit, soul, and body to know this. So that's the Bible is important for our our 
um, emotional health. And number eight, it, the Bible is, a, is as important as life and death. It's as important as life and death. How will our children know what to choose if we don't show them? Um, in Deuteronomy 30, uh, you should go read that. It's a long passage, but it's talking about, um, it says, See, I've set before you this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command you this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that you may live, that you may live. So do our children know that if they're walking in the commandments and the statutes and the testimonies of the Bible, that they will live? Do they know that? Uh, the power of life and death, where is that? In Proverbs, it says the power of life and death is in our tongue. What's coming out of our mouth? Is it the word of God? Have we gotten it in so that it'll come out of our mouth? It's the power of life and death in our tongue. From the issue, from our heart spring forth the issues of life. So what are we storing in our heart? Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Um, how can a young man keep his way pure by keeping it according to your word? The, the issues of the heart, what springs forth from the heart is what brings life or death. And so it's as important as life or death to get the word of God in our hearts. And Colossians 2, 3 says, In Jesus Christ, in him is hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You know, we can think we're looking, we're seeking. What is the best treasure for wisdom and knowledge in this curriculum, in that curriculum, you know, in this subject for our kids? What is the best treasure, right, for this wisdom and this knowledge? Well, it says in Colossians 2, 3 that Jesus Christ is the treasure. He's what we're looking for. In him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge for this entire life, for your entire homeschool. Um, in Galatians 6, verses 8 and 9. Many of us know Galatians verse 9, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. But what does the verse before that say? It says, for he that sows to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the spirit shall of the Spirit reap life. So what are we sowing? Don't be weary in sowing the good seed that will bring life in you and in your children. Um, so those are the eight reasons that we, um, that the Bible is important in our homeschool. And now I want to show you some resources. Um, let me just get this set up. Let me show you some resources um, for having the Bible more important in your school, in your schooling. And I don't mean more important as, you know, I didn't really mean to say that. What I meant is that the Bible will take preeminence. In other words, that you're seeking the kingdom of God first in every subject, right? That's the kind of, um, homeschool I want to have. Um, and so when we make our curriculum choices, we're going to make them based on, uh, our priority which is a kingdom first priority. Um, so with our kids, I'm going to show you really quickly just one one hundredth of some of the curriculum or books or whatever that I have that that help, have helped us over the years. And I have so many more because I, you know, every year I have to try something new. Anyway, um, over the years. So things that will help our kids, uh, help you as a parent. Proverbs for parenting. Um there's Proverbs for Parenting that I've used. And there's also this one called Handbook of Scriptures to Grow On. And both of these books, you, it's, this is, um, goes over character qualities in your kids, goes over temper, unhealthy emotions, um, where to go in the Bible for, the, for these to study. Thankfulness, good attitudes, um, insulting people, sarcasm, acceptance. You, you know, the Proverbs for Parenting goes over Proverbs for Girls, self-control, goes over controlling your mouth, um, being a busybody, planning evil, you know, trusting God, all kinds of things. So whatever, you know, issues coming up in your home with your children, uh, these were good resources for me. I would be like, okay, Lord, show me how do I bring them to the word and show them what you say about this um, action. Also, we did a lot of object lessons. We took um, object lessons that teach Bible truths. So we have a lot of little object lesson books that we, you know, I didn't do all of them in there, but I would pick some sometimes and, 
and uh, do an object lesson. That was fun for the kids. How to study your Bible. K. Arthur, Precept Studies. How to study your Bible for kids. How they can learn to... Um, to do word studies and to uh, mark their Bibles for, you know, certain, uh, um, just we're going through Jonah right now with the kids and it's actually an adult one, but I'm doing it with the kids. Um, they each have their own workbook and we're um, highlighting different words in, you know, time phrases and just things that just bring out something you never saw in, in it before. Um, this is for kids. Doorpost has, doorpost has a lot of, um, Bible centered, scripture centered, um, resources. So they get to color it and they get to read the scriptures about how to honor their father and mother, um, for little ones. So another thing for little ones, um, for younger kids is I loved this book for younger kids. The the Bible and Pictures for Little Eyes by Kenneth Taylor. They also have the New Testament for Little Eyes and the Old Testament for Little Eyes. And basically, they're beautiful pictures. They're beautiful artwork. And uh, coupled with the stories in the Old Testament, Saul, Joshua, and everything. And these are for like your little four-year-olds or so, even, you know, preschoolers. And so you read a little bit of the story and um, you ask them a few questions. And um, I loved these for my little ones because it was Bible, but it had the good pictures for them too. And then as they got older and maybe started school, we did some Rod and Staff and the Bible Nurture Readers. Um, they're called Bible Nurture Readers. And basically it's the Bible. Joseph is kind. And, and it's pretty much the Bible in language that they can understand. Um <clears throat> We did a lot of memorizing of scripture. And so we're going to do this again this year. So this has 20 um, treasure stickers that you can put on there. And when we have memorized, we'll memorize a verse and then we'll write it on the back. Um, just the little address. And then when we get to 20, we choose a family event that we want to do. If it's go to the zoo or whatever it is, you know, that'll help. Um, we have flashcards for like, you know, memorizing things. Um, like multiplication tables. Well, why not have flashcards for like, you know, Proverbs or, you know, the scriptures we have. We just put them on cards where you have the picture and the scripture and um, you make your own set of flashcards with scripture. So um, we did some of that. We also, this I love, we did for a couple of years um, and now I'm bringing it back this year because uh, we stopped when we moved. And now we're going to start it back up again. It's called the Child Training Bible. Child Training Bible. And we love that because uh, what it is, is you take your Bible and you're going to have all these different highlighters of tabs. And what those mean is the yellow tab here is you're going over all the scriptures of anger. You're going to go mark, and it, these are yellow. So all your yellow tabs are going to be scriptures about anger. You have complaining, defiance, you know, you have a lot of the character tr characters in here, you, um, character traits. And then also there's the gospel and there's um, other things you can go over with the kids. Um, they have other cards you can use as well. And you go mark the scriptures and then when you go to that little tab, that yellow tab, your scripture is also going to be highlighted in yellow. So you're going to get some tabs and some markers and the kids kind of have fun with that and they learn scripture also along the way and it helps them to get familiar with the word of God and how to find, you know, different books in the Bible. So that's, that was a good resource. We, we liked that one. Um, also, let's see, you're just, all your subjects are going to be Bible based. You're going to have, if you want a kingdom first school, um, if you want the Bible to be important in your homeschool, then your subjects are going to be bathed in the scripture. You're going to have science, science that is biblical science. You're going to have, um, your history is all going to be Bible related, um, you know, providential history and, um, just, biblical history and you're going to have your literature your read alouds they're going to be you know good bible have the gospel in them patricia saint john she has a lot of gospel in her books um you have the ed ed dunlop series of the terrestrial chronicles all about the gospel 
you have the lamplighter books of course all good moral books um, the Chuck Black books these are great um, allegories analogies also um, you're gonna get your older kids some books about uh, other cultures and other peoples for sociology and you're going to have them discover that they all knew who God was at one time and they all have stories about it um, all your biographies uh, all your biographies these are the trailblazer biographies and these are the YWAM biographies they're all gonna be good godly people um, your torchlighters I believe that's even on schoolhouse teachers I think um, let me double check that and so everything all of your subjects are going to be um, bathed in the Word of God you're going to have a kingdom um, first mentality for your scriptures your older kids are going to get them good devotions you know that they can read you're going to teach them how to use a, a concordance and study that um, so that they will be children who honor God um, that's what our goal is to have children that honor God um, so those are some of just just a very small amount of resources in, from my massive library um, and so I'm with you on this next school year that I want to reprioritize the Word of God in my home, in my home school. Sometimes we can get sidetracked. Um, and let's pray together that we would do that, that this next school year we would have the Word of God as our main curriculum and our priority. Um, so thank you for joining me today. And next time, devotion number four, we're going to be talking about the power of prayer in your home school. I appreciate you spending time with me today. Thank you.